What is the promise that you will deliver on in this episode? I promise you, you're going to have like seven AI apps that you can go and build with the data validating all of it and with the trend, like all that information. And I'm going to give you all the distribution to do the marketing for all of these. So you're going to walk away with this with like the idea, you just have to build it and then I'm going to tell you how to do the distribution. And so you just have to execute basically. The startup mind is And it's not just a distribution hack that worked a year ago. When, I, when I'm talking to Cody, he gives you the sauce. He, he spills the beans that works right now. I'm a practitioner, baby. Like, that's just what kills me about these course creators, right? Like, they're just selling old ideas to people. It drives me nuts. I also, it, do not, like, if you want to know anything, just, like, literally send me a DM on Twitter, and I will make a public video showing everything of, on how to do all of this, like, Drives me crazy, man. They're like going in, they buy this 5K cold email thing and the, the data is like two years old. That's like a lifetime in this world, right? Like I, in the last week, we had infrastructure changes that we had to make so that we could even do cold email, you know? Like it, it just, anyway, just tell me and I will publicly do it. Whatever they're selling you, I will publicly do it for free and give it away to you for free. Doing God's work, okay, let's get, uh, let's get down to business. What's idea number one? Cool. Uh, idea number one is UGC ads, but using AI for them uh, rather than using real people. And I'm going to lay out why this is an opportunity, why this is happening. First off, what I want to do is I want to show this data to the audience. So this is search volume for UGC ads going absolutely crazy. And the bigger thing that's happening here is that UGC content traditionally was used for ads, but now there's this opportunity to use AI avatars and scripts that are written by uh, like AI. And I'm going to walk through this exact execution and process. And then you take those and you can use those both as ads, but you can also use that as organic social, right? So I had a video go viral, like literally <laughs> on Twitter this week and in a bunch of other places as well. And it's a hey gen avatar talking over screenshots of stuff. And then basically it like pitches the product. So I want to break this down of like why this is working and the opportunity that's here for somebody to build an agency or even a product around this. And I think who you just had on the pod recently is doing this type of work, which is super interesting. I don't know anything ab about, about it, um, but it, I've been, you know, we've been deep in trying to figure this out for the last like nine months <laughs> of how do you scale this up? Cause like we, we can build up, you know, these clouds of social accounts that can get these views, but the content has to be good. So this is how you do that. So what we're seeing work right now is you basically do a problem solution style storytelling that has the product be the hero within that. So the best way to do this is you have a human write the initial script and the script can be something like, so I was talking to my friend and they were telling me that their email newsletter is just blowing up, right? And like, you know, the, the content is it shows the graph behind it. And so the script then goes, so I asked them, like, how are they writing this email newsletter? And they're like, oh, well, what I'm doing is I'm not actually even writing it. I just record a minute, a 30 minute video of me talking. And then I take that transcript and I have it turn it into a newsletter. And then I asked them, like, what, how are they doing this? And they told me they use this tool called Swell AI. And so now I'm thinking about starting my newsletter because it's so much easier than it was before, right? Take that script and you go to ChatGPT and you're like, create me 10 different scripts similar to this one in the first person that are in this format. It's going to write 10 different variations. You take those 10 different variations and you then take them over to something like Hagen or Argil AI um, or Argil. I'm, I'm not sure. They're French. Um, I think they're based out of Paris, but sick. Their API is awesome. Um, and generate all these then hand these off to like a cracked developer, or sorry, cracked uh, video uh, uh, editor, and you give them the assets and they crank all of these out, right? And you can literally like do this in the script if you don't wanna use a, uh, uh, an editor. And at that point, you just made 10 variations of the ads. What used to take you probably five days of time, and uh, we'll say, you know, I mean, I think on Billow, their charge for a 30 second clip, it's now like $80. That AI avatar just did that for you. So you just cut your costs. Uh, so we'll say 500, we'll say it probably costs you like $500 to get one of those ads created. And you did 10 of them. So you just save yourself five grand. 
And so basically what you could do, and I think there's two probably options here. One is building an agency that's doing this. So building these ads out, use these UGC ads. All the company has to do is just provide you the background images and photos. And then you just basically are like, yo, we'll make you unlimited content. <laughs> and you test all of these variations and formats. I was just telling you, Greg, I talked to Desmond, uh, who's this like ha- just kid building these social apps, or sorry, these uh, uh, consumer apps. Um, and all of their acquisition is entirely through this process of like building out content like this. So his whole strategy is you do, you just find frameworks that are already working. You have those frameworks and then you just like fill in your content into those frameworks, right? So this storytelling arc, great one. Like finding a meme template that everybody's using, another great one, et cetera. And so you just use those same frameworks over and over again for the same clients. But the difference is that logistically what used to take you whatever, again, like 20 emails and hours of time to get the creative back from a, a, a UGC creator, you now can literally get that made in 30 seconds, right? And I think that there's a huge opportunity for this. It's like right now, this is a massive arbitrage, both to build out ads at scale. Imagine taking, you know, 100 different ad variations, right? Running those as Facebook ads with, to it all Facebook match to a conversion event. Like you're going to be able to identify a winning ad out of, out of all those uh, uh, permutations so quickly, so effectively. So I think that's a component of this. The other side is you take that same content and if you're doing it right, this will get organic views on these social accounts. So you go and post these across social accounts. So get like five different burner phones <laughs> and you set this up if you're doing this for your own app and you're trying to figure out how to scale this. You get like sims for each of them or you don't get a sim and you just connect to Wi-Fi. And then you just publish directly to Reels to this For You page content. So I think that there's a larger wave that's happening. UGC, everybody's trying to figure out how to make this. It's a really effective ad format. But what you can do is you can use these AI tools because they're now good enough for the first time that when you do this style where it's, again, like an AI talking head avatar over a backdrop of something, like they're talking about what's behind them, almost in that like news style TikTok format, uh, you get it's good enough that it will actually like provide value, get views, etc. So anyway, that's idea number one. Shh, don't tell anyone. But I've got thirty plus startup ideas that could make you millions, and I'm giving them away for free. These aren't just random guesses; they're validated concepts from entrepreneurs who've built hundred million dollars plus businesses. I've compiled them into a one simple database. Compiled from hundreds of conversations I've had on my podcast. But the main thing is, most of these ideas don't need a single investor. Some cost nothing to start. I'm pretty much handing you a cheat sheet. The Idea Bank is your startup shortcut. Just click below to get access. Your next cash flowing business is waiting for you. I don't know if people realize how important finding a winning ad is. Can you just explain to people why that's like 90% of it? Yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah, Yeah. especially so, okay, so, you know, early stage companies, right? Like so often they go in and, you know, the founder turns on ads. I've literally, I've audited like hundreds of ads accounts doing this. They turn on ads, they have no idea what they're doing, and they just are like spending money and it's, it's creating no impact, no results. So good ads, the whole like, I, and I, I don't know why people get so hung up on this. Developers just like, I feel like it's such a hurdle for them to like get over this idea. A good ad, when it's running appropriately, I put a dollar in and $5 comes out, right? So every dollar of ad spend that I, I put in, it turns into $5 of revenue or customer lifetime value or whatever that ends up being, depending on your product type. When you look at e-commerce, this is literally the game. They're, they're, like This is how e-commerce companies build their existence, how they like grow ex- like traditionally, et cetera. So if you're trying to identify a winning ad, what it typically comes down to is you do what I call A through Z testing. Instead of A, B, like one, you know, one ad versus another ad, I'm doing a hundred different ads simultaneously. I'm doing all these different permutations, all these different variations. And then I'm just going to look at the data and be like, oh, hey, these three ads out of the hundred that I tested, they're getting CPCs at one tenth the cost as the rest as the average. Okay, well, what do they have in common? 
All right, they have all of these exact, you know, like things in common, or they're maybe like positioning the product in a different way. So immediately what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go build out another hundred different variations based off of this insight. And what you're going to identify is you can get this down to where what your average cost was, you can probably get it down to about 1% of that. Now, when you think about that iteration process, that used to include people, right? Like you would have people in that logistics. So, I mean, it could be days to get these out. And now I can literally do these in like minutes. I can get these variations out the door. So what this translates into is you can basically optimize your campaigns more effectively. And so with the limited ad budget that you have, so say again, you have whatever, $10,000 a month that you can spend. If you optimize an ad from a dollar per click down to 10 cents per click, you just 10 X that budget impact. So again, if you say you're getting one, you know, uh, two, two dollars in ROAS off of that $10,000, that means that you're only making 20 grand off of spending uh, 10 grand. But if I can get that down to 10 cents per click in comparison, that means that I can take that up to 200 K or sorry, I can take that up to hundred K for that 10 K that I'm spending. So that's the component of this. And then, The bigger thing here is that Facebook and all of these platforms, they've gotten so intelligent that they know the ads to show to which people to get conversions to happen. So you turn on the conversion event and if you spend enough money and run enough ad variations, they're going to identify for you automatically. This ad is going to make the most money for you for the ad spend that for the action or for whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. And so then your job is, as a creator, as an ad, you know, ad specialist, is just make as many different variations of these ad creatives as possible. And again, what we're talking about here is a, a, a new paradigm, a new way to make these ads at scale that previously was just impossible, right? Like the, just the scale that y- you would need, you just have to raise money. And I think that this is like an opportunity, a massive opportunity, both if you're a company right now that's starting out and you're just beginning and you're like, all right, how do we figure out ads? Or if you're, uh, you know, an established company that, you know, traditionally has used a ton of creators to create uh, uh, these these pieces of content for you. So, such good alpha, like changes how I think about so much Um, because there's just so much stuff you can incubate on the, you know, the agency piece. I think is is interesting. Like it's a it's a very like okay, how do I get to ten, fifty, hundred k a month of MRR? But you know the real goats here are going to be just using this strategy to, you know, incubate their own stuff and use that, you know? Um, Dude, imagine, imagine you're a wedding company, right? And you're like AI avatar. And it's like, I went to this wedding recently and they had the cutest plates, right? Like they were custom done, blah, blah, blah. Like it's going to feel like organic social. Like somebody is literally telling a story of what happened and they're like, that ad will literally print money for like a custom, you know, company or whatever, custom wedding goods company or something like that. Um, I think that it, when, again, all, with all of this marketing though, like all this arbitrage is, is, is fleeting. This is not going to work two years from now. This is not going to work a year from now. You have this moment to run this gauntlet and entire companies can be built on, on the backs of this just because you can optimize this at a volume and a scale that previously was impossible, right? Like again, like you, it, it, you wanted to make a thousand different ad variations and get all those different takes. Like you're, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Like literally that's what it was. I can do that now in a weekend with $99 <laughs> or subscriptions of $99 to HeyGen and a subscription to ChatGPT and a subscription to Descript. So $150. Like that is literally what just is is occurring in this moment. And I want people to understand, like, again, this is what is what what is on the forefront, like what we're seeing on the front lines from, you know, being in, uh, that, that, you know, applying all of this daily. There's, so. there's quite literally children doing this. Oh, it's um, insane. Yeah. It's insane. I, yeah. I, I, they're doing it better than the, the like the old heads, uh, in my opinion. That's why I'm down here and I'm like in these fucking discord channels, like, you know, talking to these groms because they're ripping, man. Like, you know, I come from an action sports background and like every 10 years you just get absolute, like you're like the things you thought were possible, like your, your worldview changes where you're literally having a moment like that right now. It is the most insane thing I've ever seen. And it's all of these kids that are like 20 and degenerate and they're just like doing it out of their dorm rooms or their like parents' basement because they just think it's fun, you know? And you take that 
same like ideology and mentality and level that up into like a traditional organization. I mean, you're going to be so far ahead of your competition. Like think about e you know, like in all this that they're doing. If you're telling me like, why did Donald Trump win the election? All right. He did more variations of ads than Hillary did. This is like data that is public from 2016. You're telling me that I can sway the American voter. Think about that applied at a small scale with just like an e-commerce company and competing against another. company. Like if I make 10,000 variations of ads and you only make 100, I guarantee I'm going to beat you. I guarantee I'm going to win if I have more at bats than you do on those ad variations. So, dude, first of all, we're going to get to idea number two. But before we do, I just love when your heart rate gets to like the 160 to 190 range. It literally feeds I my, my whoop because it like freaking like it, 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 you know, beeps at me. It's like, yo, you're too like your, your blood pressure is too high. And I'm like, I quit eating sodium. How is it too high? <laughs> All right. Idea number two, what do we got? So idea number two, um, this is the larger idea here is AI X in, or generator. So stumbled on all these keywords lately. Um, so basically like people that are trying to use AI and then like some type of generator tool. So the example, the specific example I'm going to give you today. And the reason I'm going to do it is because I'm in public going to prove that this is a business and put it on my YouTube channel. So this is my call to action for you. Go sub to my YouTube channel right now if you want to see me prove that this is a a company. So the idea is AI infographic generator. This is the example. 9,000 searches per month, Greg. 9,000. I got the exact match domain AI infographic generator.com for $10. That's how early we are with all of this. Okay. Like that is where we are in this cycle. It's not even, it is just beginning. People are like, it's, you know, this is hype. I'm like, no, like literally you have like family fortunes that can be generated in the next five years with this type of work. So the idea behind this and the larger thing is you're, AI is incredible at taking unstructured data and structuring it. So with like the AI infographic generator, why this is a great idea and like a, a great tool is because I can give it a blog post. I have a predefined template outline for it to like fill the gaps in. And I'm like, hey, I need to like list five key takeaways from this blog post. It does that. Then write five different paragraphs. It does that. Now generate me five different images that are related to that and do it in this color spectrum. Here's the hex codes that are that, you know, are specific to it. And this applied to like any category, like, you know, any type of marketing activity that's a regular activity for like generating some type of visual, I think is going to be an absolutely massive opportunity for people to get into, especially when you're doing these like tools that are very finite scope, right? Like we're going to build this thing out (laughs) and it's going to get revenue in the first month. I guarantee it. And the reason is because people are just trying, like they're what used to take a lot of time building a graphic if I can give this thing to them and have AI, again, take that unstructured and make it structured, that they're going to pay money for that, right? A thousand percent. So, And I think that this is the difference. I'm not inventing something new. I'm taking an old thing that people have done for forever and I'm just remixing it. And all of these ideas, I think that, you know, we were talking about this right before we started recording, but I think there's a huge opportunity to basically disrupt all of the apps that came previously with this like new AI technology. And a perfect example of this is like in a category like nutrition, huge category in the, like, like, you know, the mobile app space right now, there's probably a massive opportunity (laughs) to combine a nutrition AI app and also do that type of content that we were just talking about the UGC AI avatar generated content at scale and combine those two things together. And you literally like, you just like, probably can cannibalize a huge industry that you already know is proof and exists. And you have the free distribution mechanism on top of that. Pair those two things together. I mean, you're going to build a massive company, but I think that the, the, the main takeaway, the key idea here is like, don't try to invent anything new. Don't try to change anything that people are doing. Just take the thing that they're doing and you're going to save them time and save them money by offering whatever this like long tail like solution is. So, so I love this idea. Infographics, as a service is already proven. So Jess3, for example, I don't know if you know them, but they... I don't like, know them. Like, 
they're they're like an OG infographics agency. I think they do they do like millions of dollars a year. Why people pay for infographics is because a tweet with no infographic versus a tweet with infographic, ten times out of ten, the tweet within an infographic is gonna hit harder, which means more distribution, which means more eyeballs, which means more sales. So brands understand that infographics uh, sell, and they especially sell in B two B where budgets are bigger. So this is, and the fact that you were able to get this domain, like that was a gift from God. I have twenty of these, and guess what? I'm gonna throw ten links back at this, and I'm gonna get it to rank for AI infographic generator because it's an exact match domain. So like all just, of it's gonna just be organic funnel. You don't need a four hundred one k. I don't know this if I. I don't even know, man. Like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. But I, yeah, like for the first time in a while, it's just like very clear what the path is. Yeah. Like locked in, this is it. You know, the next 10 years of my life, this is all I'm going to be doing basically. Yeah. This and trying to ski as much deep powder as I can. <laughs> Sounds like a good life to me. Okay, I like this idea. What do you got next? Yeah, so next one, um, this one is, is smaller from a trend standpoint, but I think that it's a very interesting idea and it's a larger trend that's happening where people like they want to just basically record. And I think this is really what like friend was arguing. So sorry, this is actually not the smaller, the smaller one of the ones I'm going to talk about. This one is actually way bigger. So 8,100 searches a month, AI journaling going absolutely ballistic and so based off of the searches and what is ranking currently and what people are looking for, they basically want a phone application that they can just speak into and it records that and then transcribes it. And then maybe it does summaries or it looks for insights. And then also it has like some tracking habit to it of like, hey, I'm, I'm journaling daily, right? So like I made one submission daily. And then the other component that it looks like people want on the top of it is the ability to basically go and query against that, like all that information. So it's like they can pull back, you know, these, these memories, et cetera, whatever that is. Um, again, everything we're talking about here, I think this is this whole thing could be just a UGC type content play across organic social, same acquisition channel as all the other ones. Um, but I, I, I think that this idea of like people wanting to just like brain dump information and then have the AI organize it for them and, and, and bring that back and then incorporate that, ga- you know, um, that gaming functionality. Because a lot of these people are like self-help people or they're trying to like make a change. It's like a habit tracking app. There's a, me- a mechanism for that. And I think that you can tap into this piece and use – it's like a totally new way to do journaling, right? Like imagine if like everything that you've ever written you could query against or everything you've ever thought or like day after day you could query against and be like, yo, on – August 20th of last year, what happened that day, right? And I, there's also this probably this mechanism to go and then you like write, like, you know, here's this whole, like a, a year, just how Google does like the year and uh, 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 like a recap of a year. You could do that exact same thing, but like with all of your notes that are st- uh, stored within this thing. Um, yeah, man, curious your thoughts and then I'll talk about acquisition, like how I would go about getting users on this even deeper. Quick ad break. Let me tell you about a business I invested in. It's called BoringMarketing.com. So a few years ago, I met this group of people that were some of the best SEO experts in the world. They were behind getting some of the biggest companies found on Google. And the secret sauce is they've got a set of technology and AI that could help you outrank your competition. So for my own businesses, I wanted that. I didn't want to have to rely on Mark Zuckerberg. I didn't want to depend on ads to drive customers to my businesses. I wanted to rank high in Google. That's why I like SEO and that's why I use boringmarketing.com and that's why I invested in it. They're so confident in their approach that they offer a 30-day sprint with a 100% money back guarantee. Who does that nowadays? So check it out. Highly recommend boringmarketing.com. So I, I'm not going to name drop his app, but I've got a buddy who's been running a journaling app that has been doing at least $500,000 of profit a year for the last eight, nine years. So it's just been like running on autopilot. He has a full time job, and this thing is just kind of running on autopilot. Uh, I don't know. I think it costs like $20 a year, $30 a year. 
Um, and one of the reasons why I like journaling as a category is it's very similar to website builders. When you use Squarespace to build your website, um, once your website is built, you're not going to like move it to something else, even if Squarespace sucks. It's just you're going to pay whatever it costs every single month to host with Squarespace. Your stuff's already there. And the same is true with journaling. Um, it's super retentive. Um, so the fact that there this doesn't exist is... Or this isn't popular. Like this is an opportunity, no question. I just think it's an opportunity. I, I bet there's stuff out there, and like we, I've seen some, but I, there hasn't been one that's taken over this category yet for this younger generation. And I think you could rot, you could basically be with them for the next ten years, right? And I, you know, I always try to think about businesses like in, in this format of it's something I learned from the beauty space. Like they try to get people at a young age. Um, because they know that they'll use that product for the next four years. So like they're very willing to pay a high customer acquisition cost because they know that that payout will happen over the next, whatever, 40 years of them using the product. And I think there's the same thing to your point with this type of app. It's very intimate. It's very like, you're not going to port this data out. You're just going to keep it running in the background, especially if it's like five bucks a month for me to be able to have all of this uh, history and all this knowledge, you know, stored with there. Um, one thing I want to piggyback off of what you said too, like, so to go back to the AI infographic generator, um, there was tons that we found that were one-off solutions, like one-off op- moments in time that people would use this. So an example of this would be like AI logo generation. Like people don't make logos <laughs> for their companies every month, right? But they do make infographics for their companies every month. So when you're thinking about these products to build, try to incorporate that into your philosophy and your framework. Like I'm looking for something that people do as like a lifestyle choice. Like this is a activity that happens on a cadence, either it's daily, monthly, weekly. And the only products, and like this is the filter we use ex- exclusively, is like the only products we build are the ones that that is occurring or that that that. Uh, that seasonality is happening. If it's if it's a one time thing, like again, another one like business plan generator. That I don't want to touch that, right? Because it, it's 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 a one and done thing, which become it's a very hard type of business uh, to because you're always having to fill top of funnel. If you're very good at that, it's a different you know story, different question, um, or you know different challenges. But again, the the businesses that I think are, and what people want to buy as well when you want to exit these things are things that have recurring income. A recurring revenue uh, that you know again have been on that cadence. So anyway, I just want to throw that in there as well because I think it's important. Yeah, I think uh, I wish I knew that earlier in my career. You know, I'd spend like so much time building an app and then realize that the use case is once every six months. When you're coming up with startup ideas, prioritize it by how often are people going to use this product. Thousand percent, a thousand percent, and like, can I make this a part of their like daily routine, right? Their yes. weekly routine. Um, if you can figure out how to do that, I mean, like, <laughs> this is actually something that's stolen from toothpaste. They made, they basically like brainwashed and propagandized a generation to think that like, okay, this is a part of my daily process. This is a part of my daily routine, and that's actually when they saw. Uh, um, revenues skyrocket and like toothpaste as a category explode is when they, they positioned it as this. Um, it was an outcome that you could have. They basically related it to like, you want pearly white teeth, like the movie stars who all have veneers <laughs> use toothpaste to do that. And then also making it a daily cadence that happens something that's you, you know, a part of their, their daily process and systems. Just take that same concept, apply it into the products that you're building. So, so, so wait, am I, am I not supposed to brush my teeth with toothpaste twice a day? You don't actually need to technically. And this is like <laughs> disputed by everybody. Um, it, it's changed a lot though, since our diet has increased with the amount of sugar, uh, sugar consumption from my understanding. I only know this because, uh, my, uh, mom's side of the family is in the medical space, uh, in that whole world. And, you know, it's these long, ridiculous longevity doctors that are like, doping people up with NAD and ketamine to make them live longer. It's fucking insane. Um, but kind of gangster at the same time. But anyways, long story short, the, <laughs> the, uh, because we do so much sugar consumption, it's actually like, uh, we need to like brush our teeth regularly, but you don't actually need toothpaste to have like good 
tooth health uh, uh, in reality is what it looks like. And again, this is something that's disputed. This is just based off of the knowledge and the data that I know of people that are way smarter than me. So come for the startup ideas, stay for the dental hygiene tips. <laughs> <laughs> big toothpaste is selling your ass. All right. Don't get me started on big sunscreen. Can I just real quick? While we're on the, the subject of toothpaste, and then we can get into how you'd grow this idea. Have you seen the toothpaste that's a cube? No, but that packaging is probably fascinating. It's time to be better. It's called Bite. It's time, sorry, it's time to brush better. Clean up your routine with toothpaste, bit, toothpaste bits. No plastic, no harsh chemicals, just a better way to brush your teeth. See this? Oh how smart God. is this? That's so smart. And it's taking off. Believe it. And I think so like, this would be perfect on TikTok shop, by the way. Um, oh yeah. It's a novel thing that could easily go viral. I'm about to release an episode on the podcast interviewing the dude that's like basically long, pioneering this type of like, how do I get 2,000 different <laughs> TikTok affiliates to like post about a product and like zero to one it? His whole thing that he told me, the entirety of it, his name, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll drop it in a second. But it, basically what, what he said to focus on is you have to have like something that people do regularly or is common, but it's like very visual and it's like a different way to do that. So for example, if it's like a supplement, there's like a, it's like a, you know, a, a goo tube, <laughs> right, that you eat. So it's like, oh, here's the supplement that's like, you know what it is. Like maybe it's for like migraines or some shit. And you have a unique way to, to consume that. And I think that this is like a prime example of, 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 of something that is what people are doing daily, but that they could basically uh, use a, 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 like in a novel way. They could show it in a novel way. So. so people listening to this, they are charging $32 for toothpaste. Okay. Insane. I think that this idea around no plastic, no harsh chemicals, people like clean, living clean, like Google Trends that, living clean, that's like what people want. Clean is the new healthy. So I think that bite, bite for X, like, okay, how do we break down why this is working? It's like a new and interesting format that works for TikTok. Like it's going to go viral on TikTok. It's clean living. And it's like a very, very you know, modern looking brand in a space that people, uh, has like a daily, a daily, uh, usage, cadence. right? Yep. Yeah. Exact daily cadence. So, yep. I, I think two things there I want to, uh, like drill deeper down on is one thinking about what is the media before I even make the product. So, uh, his name's Mike Rama, who I had on his company is like brands meet creators and literally all they do is like, pair this, right? Like they just pair brands that are trying to do this. And he's worked with just gangster companies. But anyways, he like, he's more and more, he's like, yo, you got to make a product that is specific for the media channel. Like it's built so that it's like TikTokable, <laughs> right? And then on top of that, again, you're trying to your point, like, especially with this consumer type stuff, how, Really, that's just like top of funnel to get into a repeat purchase, right? Like if you look at native deodorant and like there's great documentation on this, like case study wise, like he talks about this in public, the co-founder is the the reason he chose the category is because it's consumable <laughs> and the best companies for D2C are consumables, right? Because it's a repeat purchase that happens. It's got to have some novelty. It's got to fit a, a bigger wave to your point that clean like living, you're riding that larger wave. And you're just taking something that people are already doing and you're, you're modifying that, you're remixing that. And those are the best types of DTC brands. It's very hard to do a clothing brand where somebody just does one purchase and bounce, right? Like it's way easier when it's like, cool, all we do is sell toothpaste and every month you're going to buy toothpaste from us or every two weeks you're going to, you know, or whatever. Every two months you're going to buy toothpaste from us because it, it, it creates a cadence. It creates a, a future revenues that you know are going to happen. So going back to AI journaling, how would you grow that thing? Yeah. So tons of long tail keywords related to AI journaling. Um, I think I would go after all of those. Uh, the, I think the bigger opportunity probably though, is there's tons, uh, there's a whole sub like YouTube air, like subculture around journaling. 
it's like journaling aesthetics and journal like it's they like it they almost use the it's like a you know it's like book talk it's like it's like you know one of these, these subgenres that you just don't know exists i would reach out to every one of them <laughs> go and scrape their emails from uh youtube and be like hey i'm gonna do a sponsored post with you and have them literally just like demo the app, pitch the app. And that's probably your whole, your whole strategy and then do an affiliate commission with them. So structurally what you do is come in and be like, Hey, we're going to pay you 200 a video. I want to get three videos out of you to start with. And then we're going to also give you a 20% to 30%, you know, affiliate commission, whatever makes sense for the brand. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to get lock in with them because they want to continue to promote this thing because they're seeing this re- uh, monthly revenue that's coming off of it. And then if they actually get sales to happen, you typically like people don't buy a lot of the times from what we've seen data wise off of one video that a creator makes. It's actually off of like three videos it's because there's like more trust built into that. They like, you know, if somebody talks about it like three times, they're way more, they're way more close uh, or way more uh, likely to make that purchasing decision. And so that's how, you know, you can create this symbiotic relationship between you and the creator. And I think I would just go ham on that. I think you could just do that channel entirely probably there and then do the same thing on TikTok and, and Instagram from a, um, a creator uh, 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 sponsorship standpoint. So Beautiful. Cool. Yeah. And, and let us know in the comment section, like some competitors to this. I'm actually curious. Um, obviously people are doing AI journaling, but yeah, I think that it's probably AI journaling for X, Y, Z, uh, is like probably the idea. So thinking about who, the, who the customer is, um, who the, who the community is. Um, but this is, this is a good idea. Um, Cody, what's your next, what's your next idea? Yeah. So this one, I don't have data on, but I just am seeing this and we're doing this and I just want to get it out in public more because I think it's a huge opportunity. So like creators don't really make a lot of money, (laughs) like actually, like they make a living, but it's like, it's very hard to do extremely well. But I think that they're approaching it in a wrong, like the incorrect way. And what I'm seeing these like kind of early signals that there's an opportunity for is like this new creator business model. So what this looks like is you basically figure out how to game short form. And that's just like, go as broad as you can top of funnel right? Pick some category, do that. You get them into a lead magnet. So that lead magnet is some type of downloadable asset that's super valuable to that same audience. That lead magnet is then the way that you do email collection to build it out in email newsletter. And then you do long form YouTube videos that are deeper dives into whatever your short forms are. And then you combine the email newsletter as a way to promote the long form video. And why you're doing the long form video, like why do you do this podcast, Greg, is because you can have like six different mid-roll ads throughout it, right? And if, say for example, you're doing business content, average RPM, so views or revenue per thousand views is about like five to seven dollars, depending. And so if you can get, you know, these ads to occur more often within these longer form videos, you can actually make a like decent money off of this, right? For with it, depending on the category that you're in. So I think that's a component. I think the layer, the other piece of this is you can do brand deals, right, as a monetization. But the bigger play is this email newsletter. And there's this natural uh, funnel that happens there. And it's, there's a flywheel that starts to, like, go to basically to be able to grow this email newsletter. So you have the top of funnel with the lead magnet side. But also every time that you're promoting this YouTube video, you're also going to have a call to action to go sub. And there's going to be percentages of people that – start to discover those videos on YouTube. You're getting paid. So the revenue is coming from YouTube. You're getting paid from the brand deals. You're also getting more subs to happen to the newsletter. And then you're selling ads on the newsletter and you're selling ads on the YouTube video. And so when I think about that, like that's a really brilliant business model, but let's scale that up even further. Let's do that with five channels. (laughs) Let's do that with 10 different YouTube channels. Same formula. I pick a category business. I take I pick a category content marketing. I pick a category email marketing whatever that is. And all I do is content related to that top of funnel down to, uh, you know, that ebook channel that's dedicated to it entirely specific, do that flywheel. Like, I think that this is like a half, you know, this is a three quarters of a million to a million dollar a year type of company that I think that these creators can run. And I could think you could probably do it with like a team of like maybe two or three VAs. And, you know, one in a video editor uh, that's like doing all the, the long format video editing. 
and I think you could absolutely crush it. And this, this to me is like the new, the business model. Then you go sell community, you know, you run, you run the Greg playbook, sell access to a community. Um, and then the other piece is like that community is basically the inception for what products you should build for that audience. Right. Cause they're going to talk about their problems. You're, they're, li- they're literally paying you to tell you what product you should build them. Like that's what's happening here. Right. But the value that's added is because they're in a group of like-minded people that like have, are trying to solve all these issues together, right? And I think that if you did that like multiple channels, like pathway, I think there's a huge business opportunity. Like that to me is the actually the creator business model. That is the path to get to this really uh, you know profitable uh, kind of you know, creator style business. You know how I feel about this. This is like this is top of mind for me. Um, I actually. I, I only have one ad for my podcast. Sometimes, a lot of times, I have no ad, so I'm I'm doing a horrible job at monetizing my my podcast. But um, my belief is like build the audience, and then sort of you know, if you give enough value, at some point, people want to work with you in some ways. Greg's just Facebooking you. I want you to know that every person that's listening to this, all right, he's about to zuck you, all right, and mm. that is what is really going down here. Okay, I'll do a quick plug while, you know, I never do these plugs. So here's the plugs. If you want to work with Greg Eisenberg and, and our companies, here's some places, here's some ways you can do it. If you need a dope app, you need to figure out AI, you need a website, latecheckout.agency. Although we're very expensive, but it is literally the best team on the planet to go do it. Uh, engineering, you know, build zero to one, latecheckout.agency. BoringMarketing.com, AI-assisted SEO, BoringAds.com, ads, and AI-assisted ads. Those are some plugs for today. Thanks for that opportunity. Thanks for listening. But yeah, you're right. No, this this idea is, is going to play out in quite literally tens of thousands of different niches. And there's, there's room. Like This is a good opportunity for people who also don't want to work in really big teams. A thousand percent. Yeah. If you just want to like, this is like a different... Sh- play for solopreneurship right like it's like and it, and it's and it's like you can make good money doing that combining all those things but what i see so many creators do is they just focus on one of these components right like they're just like focusing on short form and then it's just like you're it's just what deals can you secure that's super super hard to do sustainably right and to not burn out but if you're like getting all of these different monetization checkpoints like you know throughout this whole process also, that's an asset that people want to buy, right? Like if you have an email newsletter with like 100,000 subs on it and like good open rates and like it's a very specific audience, right? Like we're like, you know, whatever. Every, heads, every head of growth in the US is on that email newsletter. Like that thing is worth millions of dollars, <laughs> especially if they're like tuning into it on a weekly basis and watching your thing stuff. Right? Oh, not only that, it's pretty liquid. So... The good news about newsletters is people know what a subscriber is worth and people who buy newsletters know what a subscriber is worth. So you can sell it relatively quickly. Um, It's almost like real estate, right? Like, of course, you can sell real estate tomorrow. Sometimes it takes time. But, you know, there's intrinsic value to real estate, just like there's intrinsic value to newsletters. Thousand percent. And I think that that's something that like, Again, this, so we're doing this for creators. This is my fucking call to action for anybody that's listening. If you want to do this and you're making great long form YouTube content and there's a specific niche that you're like going after and you're seeing success in, reach out to me. We're really excited to work with you. What we do is we basically take that long form content, we use that as source material, and then we write and manage newsletters for you and grow those for you. So we basically handle that whole component. It, it creates this like, growth flywheel where your channel grows <laughs> faster, but also creates this other way for you to do uh, basically like revenue generation for whatever this thing is that you're building. And probably what this evolves into is we'll handle the sales of like the ad sales as we build out this network. So anyways, I want to work with you. Reach out to me. Let's do one last idea. Dude, there's too many, man. I know you got to jump, but it's, um, let me, uh, let me go find my, my favorite one. Um, all right, cool. I want to do, I want to do this one. So AI receptionist. Have you seen this data yet? No, I haven't. Oh my God. I'm so excited to show you this. You're <laughs> going to just freak out, Greg. You're going to freak out because you know what this means. Look at this. Absolutely crazy, right? So early, early days. The kicker though, 
the thing that's more wild with this is that people are searching for long tail versions of this. So like AI receptionists for dentists, AI receptionists for, you know, whatever category, right? So what is this and why is this happening? It's getting, and so my brother works in the medical space. So I have like insider knowledge on this. It's getting harder and harder to hire, like just front desk people <laughs> that just like answer questions. And we're, I'm like working with a company right now that um, uh, we're doing some growth for them. That is like one of these tools that's like specific, like niche down. And the receptiveness that people have to this is just like insane because there is just literally no, like they can't hire people to do these roles. And so what these are, so an AI receptionist that's trained off of your data and can have a conversation with the person that's calling. So a lot of the times it's the same questions over and over again. Imagine you just create like a PDF of like all the information and then it's just like answering questions when people call. And then the thing that people are doing that's going further is then they're plugging into the CRMs of the companies so that like say, for example, like they want to schedule an appointment, they can schedule that through that. And I think the thing here that people need to think about is like these receptionists already exist and the outcomes and then really just like the uh, how effective they are is lower than what these tools are starting to get to, like from a quality standpoint. So you're doing it at a cheaper cost, more effectively. Of course, you're going to win. Of course, there's going to be a massive opportunity in this space. And the latency now is getting so low that when you call these things, it's becoming just like so like responsive that it's actually a good experience, right? It's better than it would be like, you know, calling uh, a, a human at, at times, be, especially since they're more knowledgeable. So I'm curious your thoughts here. And I know you have a ton about like, you had been talking about this in particular about like the chat and like how chat interfaces, like voice, you know, chat interfaces with AI or like this new product uh, category. Yeah. But I'm curious where your head's at. Through the late checkout agency, I've been able to just uh, pipe in on a lot of this thinking around, how do how this next wave of AI software is sort of replacing labor and receptionists is one of the first places. There's a have you heard of VAPI? No, I haven't. So basically, uh, I mean, you can use OpenAI's voice stuff, but a lot of people are are using this. It's a way to it's an API to manage inbound calls and outbound calls. So like they, you know, they show here like barbershop availability, bookings and queries, dentist office, schedule appointments, patient FAQs, restaurants, SaaS websites, realtor offices. You can even do outbound calls like qualifying leads, debt collection. Like how like amazing, right? So I'm literally texting just, this to my brother as we talk about this because their big thing yeah. that they're trying to figure out is how do we do collections of payments that people owe, like the clinics, right? So it's like basically how do I outbound call, you know. A thousand people that all owe money. <laughs> totally. So this is a game changer, and I think it's going to transform businesses. We're already sort of thinking about this, and, and think you know, in a lot of ways, selling this to to clients from our agency. But you can go and build, um, and they've gone and raised like 20, 30 million bucks. Um, I think what they're doing is really interesting, and you can just. You could just build this and build a wrap around it and sell it to like start like cold calling your local dentist office and start selling it straight up, straight up. You know, don't Be reinvent like, yep. the wheel, people. Don't yep. reinvent the wheel. That's the biggest thing. If you can take anything away from this conversation today, it's that it's like, don't be creative. <laughs> Find a category that has existed for forever and will exist for forever. And then just go and do something in that space that there's like, you know, an opportunity to remix now that this new technology has entered the market, has entered the field of play. So, yeah, yeah, I think it's tap into things that are validated. There's a moment in time right now with a lot, a lot of consumer interest around things like AI. Um, there's new LLMs and new APIs that didn't exist a few years ago that you can build on top of, uh, and and just experiment, have fun with it. Thousand percent thousand percent so that's it man i know you need to jump thank you for hosting as always cody it's been real um folks comment like this if you enjoyed cody you know if you have distribution questions literally i will answer them comment what they are and i will make videos about them in public so there you go so take take them up on the offer why not 
Dude, I'll see you next time. Thanks again for coming, coming on. Thanks as always, G. Always a pleasure. We'll talk to you soon. Later.